Hello and welcome to my first look at April's White Dwarf magazine. Apologies for the lateness in the day of this video, but I was just waiting on it to be delivered. Anyway, grab yourself a choco mocha frappuccino with extra sprinkles or whatever, and uh, join me for this first look at the White Dwarf magazine. It's here, uh, April's magazine. No doubt it'll have a fair bit of Forge Bane goodness in here and Dark Eldar. Uh, don't know if it'll have anything to do with the Castellan. Who knows? So. As always, this magazine will cost £5.99 um, or nine US dollars, 12 Canadian dollars, 15. Uh, Australian dollars, 80, okay, that's enough. So April 2018, uh, beautiful front cover here of uh, Forge Bane. You've got a Tech Priest Dominus uh, with a Volkite weapon and you've got uh, the new Armager uh, Warglaive, they call it an Armager Knight on the front cover. Uh, you've got a battle report, designer notes, new rules for Chaos Cult Gangs in Necromunda. From the deeps of the realms, a new peril rises, uh, Battleground, so building a realm of death board. Middle Earth, Last Company, and Warhammer Underworld's uh, organised play. So what do we get on the back cover? Dark Eldar, or Drakari. An odd um, picture of the fair bit of grain, shot in 35 minutes. No, I'm only kidding. Um, 144 pages for this one. Before I get into the first look at the magazine, I just want to say a huge thank you uh, to all the Patreons that help support and fund this channel. Um, I'm not sponsored by anyone. Games Workshop and Forge World or whoever don't send me anything for free. So I'm immensely humbled by any kind of support that you give, even if it's um, you know watching the videos and liking them and, and leaving a comment. I really do appreciate it. And it really keeps me motivated to continue doing these videos and try and continue giving you uh, a video every single day. So let's get into the uh, magazine. They were here long ago. Obviously a big Necron uh, special in here. Armager Knight there and some Dark Eldar, new, new gangs in Necromunda. There you go, War of the Machine. So a nice introduction into uh, Forge Bane and the, the conflict between these two uh, forces. Incoming Warhammer Fest, that is going to be on the 12th and 13th of May. Uh, we're in April now guys, it's the 3rd of April, so it's not long at all. What is it, less than six weeks away? Um, it will come around very, very quickly. Why do I keep thinking the one last year was in June? Maybe it was in June. Anyway, um, I'll be there on Saturday the 12th. I normally wear a black uh, Warlord Titan t-shirt. So if you see me, um, please do stop and say hi. I think Chapter Master Valric and a few other YouTubers and things will be there. So stop us and say hi. Uh, I'll be quite busy um, taking video and taking pictures and things. And that's probably how you're going to spot me anyway. Really looking forward to Warhammer Fest. Um, I'm thinking that we can get our hands on the Castellan Knights there. Um, that would be awesome uh, if Games Workshop did that. And maybe uh, Forge World will let us uh, get our hands on like the um, the drills, you know, the you know the drills that the mechanic can make um, to burst out of the ground and things. Um, Warhammer 40,000 Forge Bane, available now, obviously 95 pounds. Great value set, even if you pay the 95 pounds. Uh, I'm predicting that the war glaives are gonna be uh, between 30 and 40 pounds, just because they consist of almost 60 parts. Um, really nice kits though, uh, really poseable. The points are, you know, a bit expensive in my opinion, but they're a 14 inch movement uh, walker and um, very fast, uh, faster than a lot of uh, the Mechanicum stuff and the Necrons, um, you know, if you've got all those models anyway, it's still a good value set. And um, my review will be up for this set within the next two weeks. And that's because I wanna have next week as a Cult Mechanicus uh, special week and then the week after as uh, purely Necrons, even though I've already done the review for the for the Cryptech. Um, so you've got a week of uh, Mechanicum, probably two weeks, and then definitely a couple of weeks of Necrons. So it's not really a starter set, it's an expansion set. I need to reiterate that. It does have some 40K rules, but uh, if you're new to uh, the hobby, it's probably best still getting the Dark Imperium set because um, it has a big thick rule book that you can just read at your pl uh, that you can just read at your leisure. And then there's a little uh, picture of the Cryptech. Uh, I would have thought that they'd have, oh, there it is, um, a special for the uh, Knight 
uh, Armager Warglaive, which they do, and they have little number points and things. Really nice. I love this design. I've loved it ever since sort of like the Land Raiders came out, you know, 20 years ago or so. The Ancient and the Cruel. So you've got the Necron Codex, £25 hardback, and the Drakari or Dark Eldar Codex again for £25, and then you've got the two collector's editions. It's a shame that they don't show pictures of the collector's editions front covers, but because at £50, double the price of these, I would have thought that they'd want to be pushing them more than just the standard ones. The collector's edition codexes, or Codex I, I don't know how I call it codexes, um, they have the, the, the black page edges and uh, uh, page keeper as well and a soft cover um, front. Whether you think that's worth double, you know, that's completely up to you. Um, you've got the data cards for both Necrons and Drakari. You've got Start Collecting uh, Drakari. It's a new Start Collecting uh, set, um, brand new box full of plastic models. Um, I'm not quite sure when this came out, or want to say four years ago, uh, three or four years ago, um, but you've got uh, a succubus, uh, 10 witches, a venom, and three river jet bikes, um, all for 50 pounds. I think that's great value, um, considering you're getting, what, troops, fast attack, uh, another fast attack, I suppose, and an HQ. You're getting like a mini army there. A return to Shadespire. So here you've got uh, Magor's friends, 17 pound 50. Um, it looks like you get um, four models, which includes Magor Red Hand, which I assume is that guy, Gartok Flay Skull, Zarkus the Blood Sighted and Riptooth. I'm assuming that's Riptooth. Um, and you get the cards. I really do like these little sets. Um, and also they've got another one here. Um, but it's only got three um, Sigmarines. <laughs> I mean, Stormcast Eternals. And it gives you a little bit uh, of information about them in, in these uh, cards as well. They are £17.50 each. And the sleeves are £5. Signs of Mathlan. Um, lovely looking models. Uh, you've got the... Ideneth uh, Deepkin. So you've got that uh, tome, £25. So it's 136 pages uh, in total. I'm assuming it's hardback too. And then you've got the War Scroll cards uh, for Deepkin, uh, which are £15. And some dice, which again, they don't put, why don't they put pictures of the dice? Maybe maybe they're still making them to the last second of, of creating this um, White Dwarf. But anyway. Latest from Forge World, of course, you've got the new Shield Captain. From watching all my other videos and looking at these different um, Guardian Spears, uh, I would go as far as to say that I'd be happy if someone called that a Paragon Blade. I really would, instead of a Guardian Spear. It looks different than a Guardian Spear. The Guardian Spear has the bolter on the other side. Same place for the firing mechanism and things, um, and it's got a drum magazine. Uh, but that uh, shield captain, I think he's £30, but a lot of detail. I've done the review for him, he's on the channel, so go check that out. I've also just finished reviewing Custodes with the Pyrophyte Spears. Um, that review will be out on Friday this week. I have pre-ordered Valdor, uh, so when he comes there'll be an unboxing and review, and then there'll be a uh, Custodes Army So Far video. I always enjoy doing those, um, where I cover all the miniatures in the collection. But I covered the Adrasite Spears, uh, I think a week ago. The Nazgul of Dol Guldur, and there was this kit. Um, it's interesting, they never speak about prices, um, so they must have the knowledge of these models and things, you know, quite a few months ago. Licensed games, Warhammer 40,000, Gladius, Relics of War, looks pretty nice. Warhammer Quest 2, The End Times, and then Horus Heresy Legions. Freeblade, it's a nice little article here about uh, pixel toys. Um, well, Freeblade is a, is a free app um, that has uh, Night Titans in. If you've got a, a semi-decent mobile phone, um, then it will run that. Uh, it's quite addictive as well. There are microtransactions in it because it is a free game, um, but I've never bought anything in the game, uh, and I've had a fair bit of fun with it. But the article just focuses uh, that you can now play it on Apple TV, so you can play it on the, on the big screen um, if you wish. So that's quite cool. A um, little advert for, for the career. I just quickly proofread that as Penetrator, but Imperator, Wrath of the Omnissiah by Gav Thorpe. Um, I'll definitely be picking that up. I love uh, Titans and novels about Titans, everything from uh, Titanicus uh, to Warlord and so on, and the Imperial Knight. Um, novels too. You've got Legacy of Dawn by Mike Lee, Ferris Manor, 
Gorgon of uh, Medusa. That's out April, end of this week, I think. And then um, two new omnibuses. Expand your Forge Bane collection. Good. I'm really pleased that, uh, that they're doing this and they're, they're expanding on this. Um, I really like to see these, these kind of things where they brought out a, an expansion set and then they're showcasing some of the other box sets uh, in the armies um, for you to just, just expand. So you've got some here for the Adeptus Mechanicus and that is uh, a, an amazing um, start collecting set because it's got the Onega on there and it's got your Skatari Rangers or Vanguard and that amazing Tech Priest. It's a shame they're showing the old Imperial Knight. I would have preferred them showing the, uh, the newer one, you know, the £95 kit. Because uh, it's definitely worth the extra £10, um, all the other extras you get. Uh, they're showing Belisarius Call uh, and the Battle Servitors. Um, it really makes me wish that they had um, redone this, you know, the normal Servitors in plastic, because then you could have a box set of Servitors there and uh, um, the Tech Priest engine tier. Maybe they should do a box set with the Tech Priest in and four Servitors. Oh god, I'm giving them ideas, aren't I? Um, and then your Necrons, you've got things to uh, increase your army. And I'm very interested, actually, um, in increasing my army. Put it in the comments below uh, which models you'd like to see on the channel um, from Necrons. I really wouldn't mind a Doom Scythe and a Monolith and maybe, maybe even one of these uh, Tesseract uh, Vaults or whatever they're called. Um, contact, so a bit of feedback from the community. Uh, temporal Distort, it's like a Tau Special. I think I do have that uh, issue. Actually, not that long ago, five years ago. It's pretty much almost when I started doing uh, these 40k videos. Stormcast Eternals. Idoneth uh, Deepkin. Lovely cloak, really like that. So cool. Kind of reminds me of a waterfall. Maybe you could use it as waterfall for scenery. Um, expensive way, but... I don't really know who Idoneth are, they look quite cool, but um, I like the turtles, you know, the, these things, they just look so cool. I really would lo love to uh, bring you uh, Major Sigma models, I really would guys. Um, April in Black Library, so they've actually got a nice only thousand copies of uh, Imperator. But I'm sorry, I'm a sucker for that artwork. That's just so cool. Look at that. With your Slanesh uh, Chaos Space Marines walking along there. And then you've got some Skitari. Um Are they Secutari? I don't know, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard to say. It's hard to say whether they're Secutari. Secutari don't normally have cloaks, but then again, there are billions of planets and thousands of forge worlds um who knows they they all might do things differently wearing a cloak or not wearing a cloak it's not really a huge difference is it the blackstone extraction oh so a bit of backstory behind uh forge pain and um, they've actually got a lovely uh battle report including belisarius uh call um two armager knights a errant knight um two onegas um, some rangers, some vanguard, some breaches, yep, and a tech priest. And then Necrons, you've got a doom scythe. Um, is that a Nightbringer, I want to say? Or Katana? I, can't, I always get them mixed up. So yeah, uh, let's skip way past the result for that one. I uh, don't want to spoil it for you guys. Um, strike and Oppose, so they've got the nice... Um, Little focus on some of the models, uh, specifically uh, the assassins there. And some more, so it's like a Hall of Fame recap. Astra Militarum Rattlings, designed by Dave Thomas. I wonder if we'll get squats now that we're getting uh, sisters of now that we're getting sisters of battle. And yeah, no clocks need to be reset because it's they're definitely coming out next year. Um, a tale of four warlords, so they've expanded their Age of Sigma armies a bit more. Wow, that Nurgle army looks uh, very putrid. <laughs> Legions of Nagash. 
and the Beast Claw Raiders. I have to say that the Nurgle ones are, are definitely my favourite out of all these. Um, I mean, the Gash comes close, but I think some of the zombies and things look a bit, a bit outdated and the skulls, but um, Beast Claw are pretty nice too. Collections in Middle Earth, so a nice uh, showcase. I love the trolls, they're so cool. Um, they have a troll. Uh, yeah, so some campaigns, scenarios, and gaming events. Honour and loyalty, so a nice uh, showcase of some knights, a lot of knights. Uh, you've got five there just in that picture. Um, I think the mandrakes are going to get it handed to them. I, I've, I've just got a funny feeling here. You know, beautiful... Uh, paint schemes as well. Really like that purple. And then with the transfers. I didn't opt for transfers on mine. Um, I can never get them to sort of blend in as well, even with, you know, varnishing um, the armor piece, uh, waiting for that to dry, and then attaching the transfer, and then using um, Lamy and Medium to dull it down again. I, I can never, the, the transfers always seem a bit too shiny for me, uh, but I don't know, maybe I just need a bit more practice. Uh, so already they're, they're sort of teasing you with the knights. They've got quite a few knights in here. Um, you know, they're teasing you for, for I say next month. Um, I'm pretty sure that they will feature in next month's uh, White Dwarf. I'll be very surprised if the Castellan doesn't. That is in May's White Dwarf, and that's what I'm predicting. I'm, I'm predicting that it'll, um, that they'll, uh, come out in May uh, for the Warhammer Fest. So, showing you how to make this epic scenery. I love all these souls and this this river or whatever they're trying to be, ghosts, I don't know. Um, kind of reminds me of sort of like the River of Sticks. Um, if you're into your Greek mythology. Wow, it's so epic, it really is. Look at that building. And the trees. Tactica Imperialis, so a bit of a Dark Eldar um, section here. Isn't one for Necrons, but there we go. Drakari, excellent, good. I love it when I do this again. So how to expand your army. I'm not collecting Dark Eldar. Um, I collect about 16 armies, um, <laughs> which, which I think is a lot. But people still say, oh no, collect Tau, collect Tau. And yeah, I love the giant robots and the battle suits and things. And I really would love to collect all the armies, but I can't commit to that at the moment. But very nice models. Uh, I love that they did a refresh. They really did need a refresh. A refresh. <laughs> Freudian slip there. Uh, Underworlds tournament. And okay, so nice little Underworlds tournament. It's great because you only play with a few miniatures, so that's good. There you go, there's Sh Shade Spire. I really do like the packs of the miniatures that you get as well. So, really cool. There you go, uh, Maxime's Challenge. I've met him, top, top bloke. Uh, I think he, uh, he designed the Death Guard range, so you have him to thank. I met in person, sh such a cool, down-to-earth guy, and... Um, Extremely talented. The Games Workshop is so, so lucky to have all these talented um, professionals. Um, you know, if you if you take the sort of money making side of things out the, out the window for a moment, yes, they're a business. They they want to make money, but for the employees of which there are hundreds and hundreds, it's their livelihood, and they're creating something. They 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 are given the opportunity to cr to physically create something um, that will be part of a universe. So I know we give, give Games Workshop and Forge World a bit of slack now and again, but the people uh, are so cool and very talented. Uh, it's always a, a pleasure uh, to meet them, meet the people behind all of uh, this, this hard work so that we can play with little plastic miniatures. Um, that's what it boils down to. The Brown Wizard, so a bit of, uh, is it Radagast, is it? I think. From what I can remember, there he is. Some little spiders. Shellob's uh, children. I want to say so. Some new rules for uh, the Hobbit. I want to say, and there you go. 
Chaos Court Gangs. Here we go. So a bit of a backstory between Chaos Court Gangs, and then you've got some rules for them. So it's a White Dwarf exclusive. Um, many pages look. You can even put, uh, I want to say a ca uh, Chaos Spawn, but it just says Scouring, even though that is a picture of a um, Chaos Spawn. I haven't forgotten about Death Guard and Nurgle, by the way. Um, they're just a little bit on the back burner while I cover you know, Necrons and uh, Mechanicus and Custodes. Um, I'll probably throw in a week, maybe uh, towards the end of April, uh, where it'll just be a week of um, Death Guard uh, and Nurgle um, videos. You'll see that I uh, made public uh, the Rhino with the Death Guard doors uh, review um, yesterday. The review of the actual Chaos Rhino itself uh, is, a, is a separate video too. In addition to that, I've gone through uh, a lot of my other um, Chaos slash Death Guard uh, other miniatures and created 8th uh, edition uh, review videos too. Um, and there's one in particular that I really, really like, but you, you're just going to have to stay tuned to the channel. Um, anyway, readers' models, these look amazing. I mean, look at, look at these Space Marines. They've got the dirt on the, the white armour and... Ah, oh, just so, so cool. Look at that with the gold. I love the gold and the white. It's hard to pull off, it really is. Um, and then you've got some Trogoths. And you've got uh, Typhus there. And then you've got uh, Lord of Contagion. Some Sil Sylvaneth. That looks so cool. I love the heat effect, mate. Really uh, excellent job. Be even better if I could pronounce your bloody name. <laughs> Gil Gilliam, 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 Traysnell, is it even a real name? Probably is. A Sarastus Knight Acheron or Achiron. Um Excellent, excellent model, stunning paint job. Um, again, is it a real name? R Ryogo, yeah mate? I don't, I don't know, I, I give up, I'm sorry. Yeah, lovely, lovely colour scheme. Excellent use of the transfers there, sir. Um, amazing. I love the battle damage on that as well. So cool. Sorry, I'm just a sucker for sort of big robots, as, as you can uh, tell. Ah, excellent uh, Redemptor Dreadnought there. And an interesting take on Mortarion. Incredible rendition in his sort of Death Guard colours. You know, the white with the, with the green and then the... I love the wings, how, um, how Sam has uh, put these blotches and things on here. How he's, how he's painted this white. Very colourful base as well. You've got some leaves going on. Um, really brings out the theme of the uh, Garden of Nurgle. You've even got like a little waterfall thing going on. Well done, well done. So White Dwarf Guide. Um, if you're new to the hobby, this is a great place to start. Right, start right at the back of the book. Um, and then you can read like, it says Warhammer 40,000. And then it says a tabletop game for two or more players. Horus Heresy, It's Another Age. Uh, Civil War, 10,000 years before the age of 40, 40k, and it just explains a little bit about each gaming and each gaming sort of system. Um, Forge World as well, it explains about that. Um, Warhammer World, if you do live in the UK, hell, if you live anywhere in uh, Europe, definitely worth a visit. It's the HQ of um, Games Workshop uh, and Forge World are there. They had a revamp uh, a few years ago. I think I went in 2015. Um, and they've just revamped it. So it's now a proper excellent um, exhibition that you go around, you pay a bit of money, you you have a look at all the models in all of the, the um, display cases, and typically they are the exact models that they take pictures of and put on the boxes and that are, you know, in codexes and things like that. So they are the exact ones and they, they change the, the uh, exhibitions and dis displays now and again. You can pretty much buy everything off Forge World's website at the store. Um, there are exclusive miniatures there such as the Space Marine HQ command tanks um, and like Ixie and Hail. Other things also they've got a really nice uh, Bookman's bar that's got you know a huge range of uh, burgers you can feast on. Um, I can't recommend going just just once but just go into Warhammer World in Nottingham. The USA are getting their HQ, I believe. I think it's gonna be in um, Texas. I don't know when it's gonna be uh, ready, but I think that's an amazing idea. And it's so cool, because it gives you guys in um, North America the chance to, to to go to you know an HQ without having to you know travel all the way um, over to uh, the UK. In the bunker, so you've got some nice fire slayers, I think they are. 
Oh wow, I like the green on the, uh, the lens of that fetid bloat drone. Very blinged up caradrons, caradrons. Ah, lovely. Marathi there. And then they've done a little uh, arena of death where they've pitted uh, war glaives against things. Oh my lord, you just can't make this up. This is what I was talking about the other day. Basically, the Knight Errant, with the missile launcher though, um, which caused a lot of wounds, blew up two armagers. The armager against the Redemptor, the armager won. Both the armagers beat the Wraith Knight as well. So armager win, armager win, Errant win. And then this time there was four armagers against the Stomper and uh, four of them um, killed the, uh, the Stomper. So there you go. <laughs> I thought I'd just add that in there. Oh, and then applying transfers, a little, little bit about that. So next month, White Dwarf, uh, May 2018, on sale Friday the 4th of May. Uh, designer's notes for the Ideneth uh, Deepkin, the Golden Demon Challenge, two battle reports, a huge army hall of fame, paint splatter, and much more. Um, so nothing about the Castellan at all there in the sneak peek. So yeah, mm, I wonder, I wonder if it's gonna, that if they're going to be in there at all. So I know this has been a really long video, guys, um, but hopefully that's made up for the lateness um, today. What do you guys think of this issue? Uh, I, I certainly prefer April's issue um, than uh, March's. There's a lot of Warhammer 40K in here, not a huge amount of Age of Sigmar, but at the moment I don't feel that uh, White Dwarf are really giving us much in terms of hype, uh, looking at what's coming out. Um, they did with the Death Guard, but they fell short with the Custodes and, uh, you know, with, with this, with Forgebone and stuff. Hopefully, um, they'll pick up the pace and they'll have a few things in that we've never seen before. But I understand for Games Workshop point of view, it's tricky to get that balance right between releasing previews and sneak peeks on the Warhammer community website and also releasing them in the White Dwarf. Um, at the moment, to me at least, it seems like they're showing you all the previews and things on the website. Um, and the White Dwarf is a, is a bit of a catch-up, but that's just my take on it. Anyway, what do you guys think of this uh, month's uh, issue? Are you really excited to get the Armager Knights uh, separately, uh, if they are going to release them? Are you really looking forward to Warhammer Fest uh, next month in Coventry? Um, I certainly am. Really pumped up for it. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.